happy hump day hello happy hump day how are you i'm good i'm really good yeah I'm, uh, um it's been okay what have you been doing this week what's happened since we last spoke i don't think i've just been um prepping because i have just a week that i'm not at work um and it felt like like madness or something I don't know why but um and it's it's not even like I'm taking leave I'm I'm taking a couple of days leave but um I'm going on a work trip so it's that's why I'm not here but yeah it's it's been a bit frantic Mm. it's Uh, crazy isn't it you go I remember when you go away for work so much to do to get ready to be able to go away and then you go away and then so it's the same when you go on holiday but you're going away for work and then so much to do getting back catching up yes exactly (laughs) whereas I was like oh I don't like I was really looking forward to it but now I'm just like oh god it's very like things I'm just like is it worth it (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'll be away for four days or something Mm. but no it would be it's good Um, at least I don't have to prep the the actual going away part so that's being done by someone else that's always nice yeah, sort it's of nice. Flights and whatever not, so well, it's good. And your week? My week's slightly mixed. I it was nice. I've got a few received a few messages about a podcast actually. Ooh. Yeah, some people saying they were listening and they enjoyed it. That was cool. Yes. Um and um and then sadly I was at a friend's funeral, which is very sad. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just that was just the other day and yeah it was just sad obviously it's sad because it's a friend um but it was very beautiful as well it was very beautiful well done it was a celeb really truly a celebration of her life um which makes you reflect on your own life as well when you 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 experience these things it's like okay um she really did make an impact. She really did make a contribution. She really did touch people's lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the, you know, just the turnout was testament to that. So it was, yeah. And holding space for people's grief mm-hmm. is, is not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, having different, you know, there's varying levels of grief in the room. You've got, you know, immediate family, siblings, parents, you know aunts uncles best friends um yeah there's a lot of grief in the room but a lot of love in the room as well so that was yeah that was sad sad and beautiful at the same time um what else i've been doing work mostly yeah 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 exactly (laughs) geez i went and um tried on this dress um the other day that I um thought was beautiful and I really really wanted it but didn't want to spend seven hundred dollars on it. Well it's a lot it's it is yeah that's a lot of money. But I mean is it for a special occasion or are you just trying clothes like Yeah no I was just walking by and saw it and I was like oh I wanna say that <laughs> 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 as you know shopping is my cardio so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. I do know. but um the I, I just want to shout out to the girl who helped me the woman who mm. helped me um in the shop she was lovely you know put it on she was yeah no yeah anyway really good tell you how good it looked basically yeah yeah, yeah no <laughs> but then I was like Thank you. This has yeah. been great. <laughs> yeah. But you've got to feel that yourself, haven't you, when you try stuff on? That it, you've got to feel good in it as well. Yeah, no, 100%. Oh, yellow is very in. Oh, it was yellow, was it? It was, bright yellow. Okay. Mm. Uh, no, I'm just trying to think if I did anything else that very exciting. Not really. Domestic things. Food shopping, cleaning the car. Mm. Oh, I had my hair cut. Yeah, you can't tell because you know it's curly. Yeah, yeah, but it's really long actually. Look how long that is. Exactly. Oh wow! It's like what seems to be like a fringe, which I don't really have a fringe, but anyway, goes all the way down to my chin. 
Ooh. I wonder if I'd be able to tell if I saw you in person. I feel like it's been like weeks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, oh. Anyway. All right. Okay. All right then. Um, are you ready for? Ba -ba 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 -ba? What would you do? What would you do? Oh, yes. Let's see. <laughs> so I went on to choose one for you. Here we are. Mm. This is good. But what's interesting is now it won't show up on my phone. <laughs> uh, 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 let's see. I'll go back. Okay. What was it? Oh, yeah, I remember now. In a group email, and I, oh, just before I get to this question, how many times a group email have you sent it to the wrong person? Yeah. At work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've done it with, like, people outside of work before, but, um, yeah, when they have the same names. Yeah. You know, like Rebecca's and, you know, whatever else. It's just annoying. It's happened. Yeah. yeah. No. Anyway, mm. group email. Imagine that scenario. Oh, and then I'll tell you another story. You just reminded me. Remind me to tell you the story of the email situation I had at work once. Okay. Anyway, in a group email, your coworker introduces a transgender colleague named Beth by her former name, Brian. Right. What would you do? Um, I see. I would never group respond. You know, I'm not one of these people. I'm always, I, I'd always just get up and go talk to that person and be like, hey, did you notice that you, you, you like use Brian instead of Beth? Yeah. And, and what if they went, oh, oh my God, yes. no, I didn't know. Oh my God, what should I, what should yeah. I, what would you say? Yeah. And then I think you just go, then you can reply back and go, oh, so sorry. You know, I, I got that wrong. You know, I meant to say Beth, blah, blah, blah. And if they said, oh, no, it doesn't matter, I'd be like, oh, well, I think it kind of matters, you know, especially if they want to be called Beth and not Brian anymore. Mm. Um, then uh, and I, I think it would be awkward if they they didn't think it was a big deal and didn't want to change it. Mm. I'm not 100% sure what I would do in that situation. Oh, maybe reply back and say, I think it's supposed to be Beth. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Not uh, never not the situation I've ever been in. Mm. Um, yeah, I like the answer, but there's there's something here I didn't know. So this is a lesson for us. Yeah. So when when someone calls a transgender person by a name they no longer use, this mistake is called dead naming. Dead naming. Being dead named puts Beth in an awkward position because now. She has to explain her real name to her colleagues, which could also mean revealing she's transgender. Mm. So let's say it wasn't wasn't obvious. She just joined as mm. um, Beth, mm. yeah. But you happen to know. Maybe mm. you were hired her or something. You happen to know. Mm. Um, something she may have wanted to share differently or not at all. So dead naming is a disrespect is disrespectful and may make Beth feel that her colleagues don't accept her gender identity. Because remember when I first talked about this type, this scenario, you said, or oh, was it done on purpose? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And and one of the reasons you would do that on purpose is if you didn't accept yes. that, you know, a gender identity had changed. Yeah, which is more malicious then. Yeah, it's more malicious. But the person on the receiving end doesn't necessarily know what the intent is, do they? Yeah. Whether it's just a simple mistake or not. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. So this is just like a suggestion what you could do. You know, you were I like I liked I liked your approach. I'm just thinking before I read it, what would I do? Mm. Well, if I was the one if I just if I was the perpetrator, it would be innocent. Mm. But I can't imagine making that kind of innocent mistake because the only I don't call I do call people by the wrong name like for example mum, my mum would you know like she'd say Simone to me or yeah. Tracy to my sister you know the yes. kids parents with the children yes yeah that's common around all the time yeah mm. 
But in a work scenario... I mean, I've called people with the wrong name all the time. It's terrible. I have a thing about it. But it's just because I can't keep people's names in my head, you know? Like, I, the other day, I'm like, you know, Heather. And they're like, Hannah. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, Hannah, yes, Hannah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and then all the... Yeah, so we do... So it's on, it could be an honest mistake. Yeah. Or it could be like, you know... Mm more serious but this is the suggestion you can email beth and say you're sorry this happened this is if you did it obviously Mm. ask if she'd like you to send out a correction Mm. for example you could send a follow-up email to share to the group saying our co-worker made a mistake she meant to introduce you to beth Mm. or that would be you replying Mm. that way beth could be known for her true name without having to come out herself via email yeah. Then speak privately to your other colleague and explain why it matters and encourage them to apologize to Beth. Well, definitely an apology, innocent mistake or yeah. not. Exactly. Um, this could help to repair any hurt she experienced from being dead named. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is why it happens because, because either prejudice and people are reluctant to accept a trans person's true identity. Yeah. Or maybe or it may happen because someone reflexively uses a name or pronoun with which they have long been familiar. So mm-hmm. if they already knew her yes. as Brian, yeah. that would be a reason. And um, they may also be unaware of how hurtful dead naming can be. Mm-hmm. It's just a new term I'd never heard of, that term before. Yeah, I've not heard of that term either. No. But um, didn't have that. I've never been in that experience, but I can imagine. You imagine in a in a family where you have someone in your family that's transgender and is yes tra- changed, and then having to refer to them with different pronouns and different name. Yeah, I think that would. It would take some getting used to. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and don't necessarily think it might be because they don't want to might be just you know a familiar thing and it's yeah Mm. and I suppose it might be hard for parents who've named their child you know to then have to change that but yeah Yeah, but I mean if you love if you you know assuming you love this person you'll support them and you'll make every effort to to change it's just a habit right yeah exactly it's a habit yeah totally that you've created because I have I've not very I've very rarely met any non um, non binary mm. people, and yeah. I know I've struggled with the, the pronouns they them, yes, rather than him her or she yeah. her because I've never used those mm. pronouns to describe anyone ever. Mm. So getting yeah. used to that, yeah, isn't easy. Yeah. And I think I'd get it wrong, like, you know, like, I would genuinely forget or, you know, like, I don't. It's reflexive. That's what we're saying. It's reflexive. So I think we just have to be patient with people Hmm. um, when there's positive intent there. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, Patience on both sides. Patient on both sides, yeah. But um, it's always to remind me of that story, right? Oh, yeah. So talking of sending emails, inappropriate emails at work, um, I've got this email, I'm reading it, and it was talking about Tracy Gandu and how, uh, I can't even remember the details. All I know is they were taking the piss out of my name, Gandu. Do you remember this? Remember this. Uh, <laughs> and they were talking about ringing me Ooh. on my phone. So this is basically two people having a conversation about my name. We'll yeah. say why in a minute. Tracy Gandu. And taking the piss out of my name, but saying they were going to call me. And then to me, that's like prank calling me. Yeah. This isn't work. Yeah. I was really upset. Really upset. And they obviously didn't mean to copy me in the email. Yes, of course. That was obviously a mistake. And I was upset because the name Gandu if pronounced and maybe spelt slightly differently in other mm. culture or country has a derogatory meaning. 
Mm. or a group of people which I didn't know and obviously that's not where my name comes from Mm. um I'm not going to say what it where where or what but it's in another country it's a derogatory name used to to refer to put down a group of people and I didn't know that so this is me learning that actually that oh it's not true actually that's not true I did know that because at high school some Mm. people would call would say my name in a funny way and laugh and I was like I don't understand what what, what's yeah and that's how I actually learned Mm -hmm. that's how I learned about it but I hadn't heard it since high school and um yes they emailed me and I was so angry yeah I was angry because all right two people having a joke about my name wouldn't wouldn't really normally bother me but the fact they were going to try and call me my work and prank call me and interfere yeah. with my work like that it was so unprofessional anyway mm-hmm. I uh, I made a complaint about that obviously obviously as you should because it was really really stupid yeah it's really stupid some but, names are inspiring but I mean you get some really unusual names and it's the whole names with names with meanings in different cultures yes yeah. I, I'm trying to think was there some sweet like some Swedish names like I'm sure there's people call F U C K in another language. Oh, Fook. Yeah, Fook. Mm. We know. We know someone. Mm. And I was like, how do I say his name where it does not sound like yes. the swear word? Because that's how you would say it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I would always say it. So that's actually quite terrible because I would say it differently because it just didn't sound right when I said it. <laughs> so I'd be like swearing. I was like, I can't say it. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, about emails. Oh, that was a good one. I like that one. Hmm. What would you do? All right. I think that's it covered enough for today. I think so. I think so too. Thanks for chatting. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Have a good rest of the week. And you. Speak to you soon. Bye mm-hmm. bye. Bye. Hiya. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> and here. <laughs> and here. Yes. Thank mm. you for joining this morning. That's great. Yes. And up and being productive. Mm. So what's what's new with you? What's been happening? Um I don't know. I haven't done much except for work really last week. What did you do yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I do. We did go to the city and walk around and have ramen <laughs> and do some shopping. Um, one of my friends has just moved into a new place, so yeah, she bought stuff. I bought stuff, obviously. Please tell me to buy any sheets. No, no more sheets. <laughs> I um, I still haven't gotten to cleaning them out, so. Yes. Yeah. Mingle's got some sort of fetish for sheets. <laughs> and she's got lots of sheets she's not even opened. Yes. I've given most of them away, actually. Because, um, yeah, I figured that if I haven't opened them already, I'm not going to be using them. So um, I've had them for a while. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, part of my, what it, what it was it called? Marie Kondoing. Oh, Marie Kondo. I love that woman. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love how she organizes a space i haven't actually seen any of her episodes i have to watch them i mean there's any there's not many on netflix well there wasn't when i looked i literally watch them all whilst i'm cleaning (laughs) (laughs) have them on in the background Um, how was your week Um, yeah good i went out with some friends for dinner it was really nice to see them Uh, and we had this amazing indian meal so i think it's southeast indian Mm. and honestly oh I was so full we they do all these banquets that, like you could pick a banquet I think is really good like it's four to choose from mm. I'm just like oh a special occasion we'll choose the best one mm. so they bring out all these different little starters and honestly I thought we'd finish the meal <laughs> I, I would say we're like five starters in only really tiny you know like a little yeah. piece each and I'm like oh I'm really full now that was really good thinking that's with look at dessert and then they're like right we'll bring the main meal now (laughs) (laughs) but it was really really yeah it's really tasty food 
it's like yeah one of the best Indian restaurants that I've been to here mm. and uh, and then we finished up with we shared a dessert like a rice pudding and we had uh, I had chai you know I'm really into my chai I made a really lovely chai tea so it was nice thank you yes I have seen this whole sticky chai situation uh, mm. I don't know what that means it's a big deal right I I certainly totally got into it mm. but then I went off caffeine and then it became more difficult to find a chai a decaffeinated chai but um yeah sticky chai is like a phenomenon what i don't know if it's just here or wherever is it different to normal chai oh it's just sticky because they put honey in it already oh Um, so like you know it's the chai the tea the herbs and then they'll add honey to it already so it's like the sticky stuff that's it and then you don't actually need to add honey but it's already got it in it it's already in there Anyway, oh. it is. Mm. I don't think I've ever had it, but yes. Try it. Try it. It's lovely. It's lovely. All right. I'm going to give you a scenario. Oh, yes. Before we wrap up, right? <laughs> what would you do? I feel like we need a little intro, music intro to this yeah. segment. Okay. So the scenario, Mino, is... Right. Hopefully my juices are flowing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't don't know why you said that. Let's just forget you said that. Okay. Let's just forget you said that. Let's forget I said that, yes. All right. Um, A co worker Mm. asks a black woman on your team if they can touch her hair. Oh, God. What would you do? Say no, Jason. (laughs) Like, what would you do? And actually, this could be me and you. I could be you in the office and somebody's like you hit somebody comes up to go can I touch your hair and actually it has happened what would you do Rita yes I would I I think I would genuinely say like did you really ask that (laughs) like because I'd just be like you for real right now Uh, okay (laughs) because uh, but um, I also um I'm like it's not nice to be so confronting with people I guess because most of them are not coming from a place of, you know, like, I think it's mostly c- curiosity. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I would be like, I think I'd ask them, why do you want to touch your hair? Mm. And I go, oh, it's so, I don't know, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so curly, I just want to see yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. yeah, I'd be like, well, there's lots of things that we're curious about. Even me, but we don't necessarily need to touch. <laughs> we can just be like, oh, look, it looks lovely. Okay. Oh, all right, then. I'll ask you another question. Yeah. What's the problem with it? Oh, well, because it, I think it's it's one of these things that was done without people's permission for so long. Mm-hmm. And it puts the person that you're asking for under pressure to like be like oh especially in like a work environment or something like that when you're trying to be you know and say that person is someone who you're reporting to or you know is higher whatever in the position then are you really going to be like do you people might feel like oh they can't say no you know so it's like a, a personal boundary that we should now be like we should be at the level where we're just like just don't like if you're curious about you know people's hair and whatever if you have a friend that would be a better place to be like, oh, hey, I've always been a little bit curious. But I think in work situations, things like that are just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just not the right place. It's the same with trying to touch someone who's pregnant, you know, like for different reasons. It's just a body, personal, you know, personal space thing. But yeah, it's okay. just. Yeah. All right. So for you. Mm. Your perce- your perspective, it's about personal space yeah. and appropriate behavior. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, th- and then also, and your position in the workplace, like, and yeah. being able to say, well, no, I'm not really comfortable with you touching me anywhere. Exactly. Um, and okay. also about the fact that I understand people are curious, but that doesn't need, like, somebody else doesn't have to, you know, give in to your curiosity and, and you know. Mm. Um, and educate you and things like that it's just I think lots of people of color are just like over trying to like educate people about these kinds of things it's just like leave me alone <laughs> you know 
<laughs> yeah, I do know. I do know. Because this is this is one I've had for a long time. I mean, I'm I you know, I get people coming up to me and say, I really love your hair. And that's lovely. I like that. It's fine. Yeah. Not so many people touching, but I have yeah. had that a lot for sure. Yeah. This is and I get I totally get that's curiosity mm. is the intention. Mm. But imagine that you were the person where somebody's always coming up can I touch your I don't know your hair or your skin or whatever exactly it start you start to get that it implies you're different yeah and of course we're all different yeah of course of course so that's 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 how it is a problem yeah because you, it's called, I've given a word here called othering yeah so you're treating them as different mm. or as an outsider Mm. So you're making them feel other outside yeah. and objectified and disempowered. Yes. And self-conscious and on guard. And that's all these things I never thought about. But yeah, that's exactly how you feel because yeah. you're wondering, you look at people looking at you, what are they thinking? Are they want to, you, you could become conscious of your appearance. Yes. Whereas how many, why do you need to be conscious of your appearance all the time? Yeah. Um, no. And like you said, you know, it depends on the context. Mm. um but it, it may be an unwanted physical interaction yeah. and it can even feel like I guess in, under other circumstances like sexual harassment really just depends on the on the context um but this is you know in a workplace mm. so yeah it's that whole idea of feeling other feeling different feeling like an outsider especially mm. when it's a common common thing yeah it's completely different if you're really good friends yes and you know they have this admiration for your hair that they talk about and they just said i really would love to know how it feels can i you know mm -hmm. that's different completely yeah. different from this kind of scenario mm -hmm. so what you could do is you if it was you about you know me and you and somebody does that mm -hmm. to me you could jump it you could jump and say something like hey asking to touch a black woman's hair is not okay mm -hmm. Or you could do, why do you need to touch it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it looks great from here. <laughs> yes. Um... Be happy with that. Well, it kind of reminds me a little bit about, you know, when we went to that dance thing. Yeah. You know, and there were, I swear there were like five or six people who stopped you and was like, can I, can I take a photo with you? Obviously you look gorgeous, but um. I think it was also because, you know, I don't know, it just, and the more it happened, the more, like the first few times I was like, oh, she looks great. It must be a thing. But the more it happened, I was like, wait, hang on a sec. <laughs> like, what's going on here? You know, it was just so, yeah, weird for me. And I was mm. just, yeah, I didn't know what was happening, but I think it wasn't, I don't, I think you were okay with it. I am, I'm okay with it now because why am I okay with it now? I think it's not okay, mm. but I don't get offended by it now because I've come, I don't know, I've got some res resolution about, um, resolution about being objectified or mm. being different mm. because the fact is, and actually, do you know what it is? It's because I'm living, I am a foreigner in this country. Yeah. That's okay. what it is. I am different yeah okay and 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 that's a fact but yeah. when you're in a country where you raised and there's other people there's a lot more people that look like you as well yeah so, but in you born and grew up there to feel other and different is not mm. as comfortable yeah because then it's it's suggesting you don't fit yeah so that's why here it's completely different for me because yeah I, i'm I am different. I'm foreigner. You don't have a lot of black people here. Um, no, I think that's changing slowly. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I suppose when you did first come, yeah, it's definitely changing. Um, and then and then in companies in general, mm. it, it's some it's a discussion about why an example of why you could need anti-racism training mm. or allyship programs. You know, this is the whole diversity inclusivity equality mm. comes in these are the types of things you address because some people just have no idea why yeah. that's a problem yes they'll, they'll say oh you know oh some people are just curious that's not 
what's the, what's the harm in that? And that when we're telling you what the harm in it, we're telling you as people where it happens to us regularly, what the harm is, exactly. why it happens. The request may be motivated by hair bias. The idea that there's something exotic, wrong, or unprofessional about a black woman's natural hair. And actually, this is these are all these things are true because I've all I've felt in various stages of my life, I felt that this hairstyle, this natural mm. hairstyle, was not attractive. Mm. Not attractive, horrible, wrong, um, or exotic. And the exotic just comes from a minority, basically doesn't it the idea of exotic like I mean traveled traveled around the world and you know you go to countries that are primarily uh, people of color whether that's black or whether that's Asian or another mm. or some sort of Mediterranean mm. and you know people that are really fair skinned and red hair would be exotic mm. you might even get you probably, probably get red haired people going to China when people want to switch their hair yes and I do know that they they have like you know photos the, the, yeah, the, the, the whole photo thing, thing. Exactly. that's the whole exotic thing and why I wouldn't be offended by that is because you are exotic you're in a country where you that's you yeah. know not the, the norm not yeah. the norm and so I get it as long as people understand you know learn to understand that you're mm. making people feel other and different um but specifically for black people there's the hair thing yeah. where it you know even intrinsically a lot of black people would straighten their hair to look more European yeah and I think when it comes to you know coming going to an Asian country or somewhere else mm. where white or red hair is considered you know different and other mm. when people yeah. are asking to take photos and things it's coming from a perspective of admiration yeah you know, I think exactly that, that's yeah. a little bit the context also makes a difference right um, yeah the context as well and where it's coming from it can be coming from an admiration and an exotic and this is beautiful or be coming from this is awful oh got a picture yeah. of this well, so I've never seen this before and this is so odd you know yeah exactly so, odd yeah. wrong exactly yeah. and and even more for black people because the bias began in the slavery era mm, yes you know and reinforced and reinforces what is beautiful yeah exactly and so that's been a problem you know a problem really personal problem for me as well mm -hmm. um and then even some companies will still pr prohibit natural black hairstyles yeah that's crazy but and we did did we cover a story where one Eat. of the swimmers yeah it's the swimming we, thing yeah the swimming caps and, yeah exactly and uh, i have heard so many stories about black athletes having to cut their hair or they can't swim or you know um I think there was one for wrestling where they were like no 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 your your hair isn't coat so you need to cut it and they cut it at the side of it's just yeah it's, yeah it's really bad it's and but like you're saying there's still still companies now that would say that um your hair isn't appropriate for the workplace which crosses a personal boundary it really does it really does so that that is why it's a problem <laughs> people don't understand why it's a problem that's why it's a problem do you so it's a weird question but mm. um men who have to shave for company dress code mm. what do you feel about that i don't think i don't see why men would have to shave i yeah. mean i'm thinking like right what are the extreme like I, is that a thing is that really a thing or do men feel they have to shave because I know that men are like oh I'm going to do it after I need to shave but is that actually enforced or is that just an idea look it probably isn't anymore because so many people are working from home um but I don't know I remember this because of a story my brother said back when he first started working mm. when he came to the office and mm. he had you know a few days worth of growth or whatever and his manager pulled him aside and said right you need to shave the next time you come to the office and actually actually the reason why it sticks out I think he actually told him to go and shave Oh, really? actually go home and shave or whatever it was and then when he comes back he, he needs yeah. to so it was That's like interesting I think I, I actually thought about this I can't remember why I was another train of thought I think in the workplace you want to look presentable mm. 
tidy. You, do, you mm-hmm. don't want to look like you just dragged yourself out of bed and put your clothes up off the floor. Yes. I get that. Yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. shaving and not shaving. If you if you have a beard, that's different mm-hmm. from a messy face. I don't know how to describe it. There's a bit of a difference. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how. But then I remember there was some a guy I used to work with, really long hair, really big beard. Looks kind of messy, really. However, so what? Mm, like, yeah. you know, he, he didn't interfere with his work. Mm. Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's more less more acceptable to have a beard now. I don't see a problem with people having beards if that's what they want to do. Mm. I think it did... Um think there was someone at uh, work who was like oh the beard is just annoying because of the mask because the mask doesn't fit properly right so that was the only other thing they were like well that's a practical thing know. right exactly it's, it wasn't so much that oh somebody is telling them that they need to they just were saying that I can't get the mask over my whole beard mm. so, yeah no I don't, I don't I don't think it's anything yeah at the moment so yeah interesting though that that was something that he was asked to do mm, yeah. but I always think it's an old-fashioned idea I think it is I think he was you know in his early 20s and mm. you know my brother looks older than that when he isn't so maybe it was yeah so yeah maybe <sighs> all right we better wrap this up because I'm yeah I'm I have to edit this <laughs> <laughs> oh it was really good talking to you really good stories today mm-hmm. I'd love to, love to hear if anybody of anybody's experienced the whole can I touch you because you're exotic thing and whether it's coming from a place of oh that's a bit wrong a bit odd or coming from a place of oh that's amazing and a beautiful and a kind of admiration kind of thing I'd be curious to hear what other people's experiences are of that and um yeah that's it really okay anything else though all right then we'll speak to you next week see you then see you then bye Bye. happy hump day happy hump day (laughs) happy hump day how have you been like what's been up to oh been okay work's been a little bit intense but things are looking better (laughs) Um, no, it's been good. Had a great weekend. Went oh, to yeah. Wentworth Falls. Discovered a whole new trail. Which Wentworth I Falls. suppose is it. Yes. In the Blue Mountains, right? In the Blue Mountains, yes. Because I think there are several walks you can do. Mm. Um, and uh, we went on the Princess one and then another one that I didn't hadn't gone on before. It was so pretty. It's a beautiful day. And there were like mini waterfalls everywhere because of all the rain we've been having so yeah no it was great what about you you've been good yeah um this week uh it's my brother's birthday so I sent him I spoke to him this week and that was really nice I haven't spoken to him for a while he turns 30 mm. like, oh gosh you know I don't even think how old he is 32 33 and spoke to my sister that was nice and I've been coach assisting this weekend at a masculine feminine coaching Mm. session so that's like a group of people signed up for someone's program that I'm trained in and I help help them deliver it or assist in them delivering it and I really love it because it's a reminder so the masculine and feminine coaching essentially means that we're in order to be fulfilled and balanced and um a purpose you need to have a balance of masculine and feminine Mm. and masculine and feminine isn't about being male or female it's that certain things are masculine and feminine like um anything that's directed outwards Mm. it's masculine leadership masculine asserting masculine talking even masculine obviously women have must should have and do have masculine traits yeah. and the same for men um and what happens is when things aren't going right this usually means there's an imbalance and every person needs a balance of both and the world needs a balance of both but like you'll see like a lot of our leaders are very very masculine in their leadership mm. style and feminine things are things like listening emotions 
nurturing, receiving. These are kind of feminine aspects, our aspects of the feminine. So when you're looking at, when I'm looking at a client, I'm gauging what's, what's out of balance. What do they need more? Or do they need more masculine? Uh, you know, are they just retreating? That's very, you know, retreating, hiding. That's very uh, feminine. Mm. And it's kind of in shadow, if you like. So they need more masculine, need more, you know, action doing, being, directing. So it's kind of finding the balance, you know, the yin yang, the harmony is what was what we really need to achieve that purpose, that balance in our lives. So that's essentially what it was about. And then we were lo- looking at usual, looking at behavior and where it comes from and how to uh, rewire the brain to change that we were doing so it was very interesting good reminder for me as well so that's what I was doing yesterday awesome I didn't I mean I knew about the whole masculine thing but I didn't know that was something you could do in coaching yeah well it's it's just the idea isn't it what's out of balance this person mm, um, yeah. is here mm. you usually here because you want to um, you really do, you're doing really well and you want to do even better and you, you don't know how to do that so I help you with that or you're here because you've got a problem um, whatever that is yeah and usually if, if I think about an imbalance of masculine and feminine I can figure help that person figure out how to solve that problem so yes awesome that's what I've been doing but how awesome was our guest last week I know she was great she was great uh, it was uh, we I think we both had a great time talking to her yeah I really enjoyed it I could have talked to her for ages mm. there's so many more questions actually I really wanted to ask her and uh and de- going deeper with the even the questions we did ask her it would have been we just didn't have enough time but I would have loved to talk to her much more and it was so funny because after the interview she sent me a message where she was like, oh, I didn't say this and I didn't say this. So I thought, well, you know, we'll play it. We'll play it um, mm-hmm. on this episode. So Sinead McDivitt is um, a female director, TV and film director, mm-hmm. who very graciously agreed to be on the show and talk about herself, share mm-hmm. about herself, her life, you know problems challenges her beliefs and how she basically got where she is today and and she left me this message because she felt felt like there was things she wanted to add that she really forgot to say so I thought well we'll just play it we'll just play the message and then there you go so here it is hi it's Megan of course you know you you, you jump off these interviews and stuff and you go, God, I could have thought of this and this and this to say. I just wanted to say one thing. That, do you know how you asked me, like, how did you, or what were the new beliefs that you rewired of the sabotaging ones? <clears throat> and I just explained that, you know, one was worthy of love and one was worthy of this new life as a director. Well, one of the little tricks I used with regards to the latter so the life as a new director was do you know those little paper slips they give you on airplanes where you have to fill out all your details a bit fucking painful but (laughs) you know your dress and your and there's a little field that says occupation well I just when I transitioned to this new career I started just writing in director in the occupation field I stopped writing designer and director or designer graphic designer I just wrote director and I did that every single time I got a flight so I kind of started uh living into the role if you like before I would have had a lot of rungs on the board like anyway I, I wish I kind of had said that because it kind of actually might help inspire someone um yeah in their journey and the other thing was as well I didn't mention was like in terms of the discrimination and bias, like like I'm acutely aware that I live in a white woman's body. Like I might be Irish and I might be gay, but like there's just the systemic racism we live in in this world is just next level. So, you know, I've learned a lot as well. My sister works with migrant workers in Dublin and, you know, the struggles they go through and their the life experience of those people is just absolutely heartbreaking. And 
Yeah, the the film world and the TV world is is pretty monocultural in 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 terms of most people around you are white, and that has to change. You know, that's like. But there's um one of your questions I really thought a lot about was um what you know what what was it what was it about um why do you think there's so few female directors and I you know, really take an intersectional approach to that. So like when we say female directors, what are we talking about in terms of socioeconomic background, culture, race, class, gender identity, age, um, access, you know, all of these things really determine your pathway as a director because it's a very unpredictable, very high risk, in my opinion, path to take. And you need the opportunities to make work, to build trust, to get the work to get paid work and we're dealing with a huge amount of unconscious bias in our world um not just gender wise but also cultural background wise neurodiversity wise disability wise there's people out there have all kinds of opinions and beliefs um, on these things that are either subconscious or, or conscious but are decision makers and that can really impact how far you get or or yeah, how much um, waiting you can stomach in life in life as a director because it takes a long, long time to build up your show reel and so on. Anyway, I'm blabbing on, but there are just a couple of things I wish I had said, and I don't know if there's any way you want. If you want to thread them in in your own words, feel free. But um, yeah, I just wanted to add those. Thanks a million for having me this morning. Really enjoyed the chat and chat to you soon. Bye. There you go. I didn't want to use my own words. I thought her words were really good. Um, mm. You know, this is exactly why we're doing this podcast. It's to highlight the unconscious bias and con- and unconscious bias that exists, and and why it matters. Why why do we even bother highlighting that? Because so we because we want people to understand. And I mean, when I say people, I mean everyone. That we all have them. Yes. You know, this is not only white people have bias. That's not true. We all have them. Mm. And if we're aware of them, we can do something about it, right? We become aware of them. So we're just highlighting different types and why why it's important, what it means, and the consequences as well. Mm. We can already see the consequences now in our everyday lives, like where we live, where we grow up, uh, the world we live in today. Because, like, you know, Sinead's talking about there, there's such a lack of diversity. It's very monocultural. And mm-hmm. she's talking about directors and people. Some people don't understand that opportunities are limited mm-hmm. by the decision makers. But not only the decision makers, by people themselves, um, by their experiences and how much, it's almost like how much baggage they have to carry. It's like they have to carry more or there's more things in the way of, of finding those opportunities and also even not even just finding opportunities, self-belief to even believe that it's a path that you can take or that's open to you. And I think all of those things are important to highlight if we were to, if we were to change anything anyway. And of course I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't be here, would you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although that would be an interesting podcast. <laughs> I disagree with everything she just said. Well, feel free to disagree. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear them. Oh. You're just. I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Mino, it is time for oh. a really little jingle. What would yeah. you do? I'm to ask her with a jingle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Very, very timely, very um, relevant. So, your scenario. You're a co-worker. You're at work. Mm. And I don't know, there's some story in the news. Oh, no, you just told the story about Samantha Williams and her book club beyond at schools. I think it's great. And your co-worker says, I don't see colour. I don't see colour. <sighs> Yes. Um, oh. What do you yeah. think? What do you think, actually, when they, you hear that? I've never had anybody say it to me directly, but I've you obviously heard this. Um, I think it's a weird thing to say <laughs> because um, yeah, 
I mean, you can't exist in a world without seeing color. I think it's invalidating too many people, you know. Um, but I think I would probably say something, well, what an odd thing to say, because it would be nice to understand why someone would say something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because um, I then I would say, I don't think that, like, because I mean, I, they would probably say something along the lines of, oh, that's because I'm not, I don't discriminate based on color. And it's like, well, don't think... I don't see color means that you don't discriminate. I think you're just trying to, like, I don't know, invalidate people that have are of color and then have different experiences. And because you don't see that, you're just like, well, it doesn't quite matter <laughs> what your experiences are, whatever, and what you've experienced otherwise. Um, Brilliant. That is. See all that. That's um, pretty much what it says. Thank you. Um. Mm -hmm. Thank you for um sharing your thoughts and well but what then what is that what you would you actually say that i think i would i think i would actually um say what an odd thing to say and mm. why would you say that like mm. it just doesn't quite make sense to me like even the whole yeah i don't know mm. i think most people are trying to be like um you know on the side of people of color by saying something like that i'm, I'm guessing but i think it's the wrong way to go about doing it perhaps mm. um because yeah it's just it's it's yeah yeah you don't yeah it's the same as like oh I don't know I feel pain today and somebody goes but I I don't believe in pain or something and yeah like, okay yeah <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah yes. and then you have nowhere to go because you're just like you don't believe in pain but yeah. pain does exist you know like it's so weird yeah I don't know what you mean and I think you're right people who do say that are not saying it with a positive intention probably but you know um i, I don't discriminate does it yeah. make does it mean make, make a difference to me if you're black if you're white if you're yeah. brown or whatever it doesn't doesn't matter mm. but it does matter mm. in today's world it matters yeah. and you're right if you, that's implying that not only do you not see that yeah but you also don't see mm. You know the discrimination the bias the challenges the lack of uh, representation you're just kind of indifferent to it yeah. that's kind of what it implies and this, and this is what it says it says this comment denies a fundamental part of people's identities mm. and it suggests that if we choose to ignore racism it'll go away <laughs> on its own it'll just go away we'll just ignore it no. in fact many studies show that when people or institutions claim to be colorblind they often perpetuate racism by failing to take action against it. Yeah. To combat racism, you first have to face it head on and actively work to challenge racist stereotypes and behavior, both you and those of others. Like the child that said bushy head or whatever. Yeah. Somebody's like, oh, that's harmless. It's not, but it's, it's not harmless. It's yeah. not a harmless comment. It's a race. It's about somebody's hair, somebody's race, mm. and it and isolated. It could it could seem, what's the word? It's kind of innocent and no big deal, but in the bigger picture, it's a big Ooh. deal <laughs> because it perpetuates the idea that different isn't good, mm. yeah. and that and that specific difference is not a good thing. Um, and so what do you do? You could ask the question to make your coworker reflect, what's wrong with acknowledging someone's race? Yeah. Which, you know, is kind of what you were saying. Hmm. Like what, what's wrong with acknowledging someone's yeah. black, someone's white, someone's Chinese, someone's Nepali, someone's hmm. Swahili, someone's African. What's, what's, you know, what's wrong with acknowledging that? That's hmm. their identity. So everyone's identity is unique should be appreciated mm. like it even you know when somebody's irish you can hear it so you will you comment on it yeah. people love, love irish yeah the thing is whatever you can see or hear mm. you comment on mm. hopefully in a positive empowering way mm. and explain that while you understand that they think they're being fair and objective not seeing color mm. can make racism worse mm. and point out that this way of thinking signals that someone's not interested in challenging racist behavior whether or not that that was the intention of what they said and then you get, yeah. i mean i don't know if you've had this mean 
but he says your co-worker may wish to deny that racism still exists <laughs> or they may be falling into the trap of thinking that not seeing color is a way of avoiding racism when in fact it perpetuates racism yeah yeah you can imagine someone who hasn't faced that uh, thinking that not seeing color means that oh i'm helping um when not hindering but mm. i think we have to also stop like like coming down so hard on people who are not who don't understand you know like like the whole oh you're you know i don't know putting people down because the whole point is to educate you know or like people should be able to say oh sorry i didn't realize that, that was a thing and then learn from that right yeah exactly like, people shouldn't be afraid to go oh well like learn from whatever it is and change yeah. their mind exactly you know, that changing their mind that that should be like a good thing you can say it to someone and then be like them change their mind or at least then think about it and you're going great that feels better yeah uh, whereas i don't know some people get really some people get really offended on their high horse and exhibit yeah. anger and i think that's yeah. that's just not mm. that's really unhelpful yeah it also propagates discrimination perpetuates discrimination yeah because yeah. who likes to be met with anger who likes to be met yeah. with those Ooh. nobody does yeah. right nobody I remember seeing a TikTok recently where this white woman was saying, like her TikTok was like, I, I don't understand what's so bad about asking someone where where do you come from? Like, where are you from? You know, sorry, where are you from? Yeah. And then this Asian TikToker replied back in, in her thing. And she was like, it's not the, the fact that you're asking where are you from? It's the context and how you ask. She yeah. goes, if I've just, if a taxi driver has just picked me up from the airport, and then goes, oh, where are you from? And I say, I'm Korean. I don't think that's what he's asking. I mean, he's just picked me up from the airport. So obviously I tell him I'm from California, you know, or whatever. Because if you want to know my ethnicity, you ask, what is your ethnic background? <laughs> you know, which is what, you know, I, I think that's what people do. They're like, where are you come from? And then it's like, but we don't. So she's just trying to say that people of color don't always understand Oh, you mean my background, not mm. where are you, my, you know, because you mm. can be asked where you come from and you go, oh, I'm from Portland Hills or whatever, you know, mm. and then they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. If I ask, probably, and I probably, and maybe I'm being biased, I'll ask a white person where they're from, they're going to say, I'm from uh, Surrey Hills, yeah. or I'm from, if I'm not in Australia, maybe they'll say I'm from Australia yeah. or Sydney or, mm. you know, but yeah. if you're asking a person of colour that, mm. a question they get a lot, mm. there's going to be a bit of a delay to try and figure out, well, what are you asking me? Yeah, exactly. Uh, are you are you noticing my skin colour and wanting to know my ethnicity? Mm. Are, for me, it's, these are my things. Mm. Are you noticing my skin colour want to know my ethnicity? Mm. Are you noticing my accent want to know mm. why where my accent comes? What are, what are you asking me? Are you literally asking me, uh, are, you, are you from Sydney? I don't know what you're asking me. Yeah. Just ask me what you mean. Mean. <laughs> ask me what you want to know. And then, the, so that's one side of it. Mm. But then, like I say, what you just said, context. Yeah. Right? And the situation. Um, if I'm in England, mm. and actually, and I can't even get upset about this anymore. If I'm in England, somebody asks me where I'm from. Yeah. Before it's a problem because it implies you're not from there. Mm. So when you're, or you don't fit in, mm. that you don't belong, mm. and that perpetuates something that's not very nice, right? Mm. But I can't get offended by it now because I don't sound to English people. I don't sound as English because I've been living in Australia for so long. I know it's crazy, right? Yeah, I know. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, if I go home, mm. when I say where I grew up, grew up. Ooh. I and my brothers and sisters especially will take the piss out of my accent saying that I sound Australian and they'll just take yeah. the mickey out of it hilarious because I've been to you you know your hometown with you and I feel like your accent actually gets thicker <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> does probably does <laughs> probably goes back to the uh you, you know. know it just does actually it's like my mum when she's on the phone talking to her family in Ireland mm. she gets more Irish yes it's, it's insane um it's an interesting phenomenon isn't it but yeah it's context you're right um 
people were don't want to feel like a stranger mm. in a place where they feel is home. Yes. Exactly. But at the same time, people understand that people are curious mm. to ask the right question is all I'm saying. Yeah. And so it depends what mood I'm in, right? Yes. Whether I, how I answer. <laughs> depends what kind of day I've had. <laughs> Of whether I'm tired and how I answer. Like for example, I got that question uh, a few months ago. I was in a, I was at salsa dancing, and the guy was at the bar, just you know, getting a drink. I'm getting a drink, and he's like, "Oh, where are you from?" Mm. And I wasn't in the mood. <laughs> Sometimes I play with people. Yeah, I know what they're really asking me, but I don't answer that question. Yes. So um, he. Uh, he was asking me where I, why am I black? Like, mm. why am I black? What's my ethnicity? And I just said, oh, I'm from Sydney. Where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> but then this is the funny thing. How he answered is like, well, obviously I'm from Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Is it obvious, is it? <laughs> but, you know. He was like, like, are you asking me that silly question? Yeah, exactly. And actually, it's not. And then, and then I was, and then I was annoyed because I was like, I don't. Think, that's not a silly question for me to ask you because, mm. because people that are white, that are from different places, yeah, that live here. Mm. Mm. Okay. Anyway, yeah, that's what I mean. It's yeah. just like it's a context situation, and yeah. depending on whether I'm feeling, I'm in a good mood and how I answer that question. But yeah, I feel like I'm very defensive. When, mm. when, if, in particular, when Indians ask me, like random, because they'll come up and they'll be like, "Oh, which part of India are you from?" I'm like from Fiji, and India. Um, <laughs> 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 to the point where I think one of my bosses was saying something, and I said something, you know, about India, and he goes, "Oh, I understand you're Fiji and Indian." It was so completely, and I realized that I'd actually said that too. I'm like, <laughs> this may be a thing. <laughs> so, what does he? What's that about? Oh, I just, you know, because I think in growing up, you know, I, there weren't a lot of Indians, you know, around when I was growing up. There was a, quite a few Fijian Indians, but then, so when I started meeting Indians and they were like, they didn't, many of them didn't even, they didn't realize Fiji and Indian is a thing. Like they had no idea that there were Indians in Fiji. Um, lots of Indians actually don't know that the British took all these people off and, you know, put them elsewhere. So they didn't realize. And then, you know, I used to get, oh, but that's not Indian. You know, <laughs> there was a lot of, you know, all of this. Oh, but the, you're not really Indian. So I think I just, I took it on. I'm like, did that yeah, annoy you? Not, <laughs> yeah, I, think, I guess it did annoy me. So I'm all like, yeah, you're right. I'm not Indian. <laughs> so since then, it's been a very, I've, I think I was at a function where I literally had, so this woman came up to me at like a random um, puja or whatever, and she was just like, oh, again, oh, which part of your India are you from, you know, trying to connect my parents to, I guess, her and whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not from India, I'm from Fiji. And she literally turned around and walked away. <laughs> I was like, what, the conversation ended? <laughs> like, like, bye then. <laughs> but, um, oh, so I guess cool. I've like, like, you know, made that like a thing. But um, yeah, but now I think the Indians that I meet who now obviously know, you know, people, you know, a lot more aware and aware of Fijian Indians, I, I think they find it entertaining. But I'm just like, wait a second, not Indian, Fijian Indian. <laughs> there is a difference. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is. So um, yeah, I might come across as a little more defensive than I probably want to be. But yeah. <laughs> No, oh, that's the whole thing. Oh, oh, all right. I think we're rambling now a little yes, bit. I mm. think so. Okay. Well, I hope you have a lovely week. Let's yeah. End it there. What are you doing? This, the rest of the. Um, I think it's work thing, and then the week after is Diwali. So... Oh, Diwali's coming up. Yeah, exactly. Twenty fourth in Sydney. Mm. Um. So yeah, I think that weekend I'll be busy. Um, mum making sweets <laughs> not that i attempt to make them but i am a good kitchen aid so all right cool well this episode will come out just the week of diwali Ooh, there you go there you go so happy everyone. happy diwali yeah. is it diwali or diwali 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 yes exactly yeah. happy diwali yeah. oh, before we go what is diwali about <laughs> it's the festival of light 
which um, commemorates the um, win of good over evil, basically, of light over darkness. So, uh, wow. It's, yeah, truth over untruth. Wow. So, so, so yes, it's the bigger, biggest festival in, um, in Hindu culture. So, ooh, I get to eat a lot of sweets. <laughs> 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 and at some point pray to god yes. at some point pray to god yeah, yeah so, so. okay well happy diwali thank you happy diwali to all to all yes and, and i'll see you next time i'll see you next time bye bye